I can do this. Okay. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it. I'm a smart person. Okay. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> Hi, my name is Madeline Wong, and I just finished my freshman year at MIT. I'm an intern at the Experiments in Arts and Technology division of Nokia Bell Labs in Murray Hill, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Danielle McFadder. I just finished my undergraduate in Stevens Institute of Technology with a major in music and technology. And I am also an intern in the Experiments in Arts and Technology department at the Murray Hill location for Bell Labs. Our project is called Compositions for the Collective, and we're sitting in the antechamber right now, which is a room at Nokia Bell Labs that is outfitted with 64 speakers all around the room to give you this feel of ultimate surround sound. And what we're trying to do through Compositions for the Collective is take that surround sound and give it to any audience in any venue through the speakers of the audience member's cell phones. So imagine you're in this concert venue with hundreds of thousands of people watching your favorite musician play and you got the cheap ticket, so you're all the way in the back of the venue and maybe the sound quality of what you're listening to isn't the best. Uh, with compositions for the collective, what we like to do is make you a member of the band. So give the artist the capability to extend their music to you and then also to use your cell phone as an instrument uh, for their medium. Hi, I'm Emmy O'Leary and I'm going to be a junior at NYU in Metropolitan Studies. Um, Metropolitan Studies is more of a humanities approach to urban planning that most people don't know what it is but right now I am an intern at Nokia Bell Labs here in Murray Hill New Jersey so before coming to this internship I read this book called blindness by Jose Saramago and basically in the book there's this epidemic of blindness and people just have to really rely on each other's communicating and it's the voice and things like that and there's a lot of great themes in the book so I'm hoping to extract them and apply them in some way to a project that I'm going to create. Right now I'm thinking of creating an interactive mirror, um, a 3D printed book with technology components in it and then my other idea is physically like pulling out a quote from the book or something more direct and creating an interactive display although I really don't know what form it will take or all the other details but I'm hoping that people will really enjoy it and actually and leave you know getting something from it and maybe thinking about something they didn't think about before. I'm gonna start over again. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still gonna play piano, right? My dad started teaching me piano when I was four years old, and I started taking formal lessons when I was five. So I've been playing for almost 15 years, more than 15 years now. I'm making a website for the users. Right now, I the website is just a mix of you know basic HTML and CSS with some JavaScript um, to sort out like working with the Hype API and the server, and then using the information that's sent back based on the tag number to direct you to the correct stream. So it's pretty simple. No Python, no C++, no C, no Java. It's really simple. Really simple. So simple. So for my installation called The Light of Sound, it's going to take place in the Anomaly Room, which is a pretty cool room um, surrounded by screens. So the room will be dimly lit and there's going to be an LED light placed somewhere and the participant will go to the LED light and when they pick it up, the screen will change and they can wave the light in front of the screen and that'll start to reveal um, words and those words are actually uh, pulled out from the book. It's a significant quote that I think really represents the idea that the visual is biased and once that quote is revealed, there's going to be a question posed that um, if you were only your voice, who would you be? And then it'll take a snapshot of the participant and block out their eyes and um, relay it back to them. So hopefully, you know, you leave this experience thinking that the visual is a bias and might not be the best way to judge someone. For 
my thesis project from my undergrad. I spent about a year and a half working on a project by the name of Bicycling Through Childhood. Um, and it was a mixed reality game that allowed the participant to travel on a physical bicycle through the virtual world. I never really considered myself a musician, but more of a person that was very much in love with the technology of music. A music technologist, I guess, is what I go by. This is an Emmy. I'm an Emmy. And I like to work out with Emmys. This, this is very corny. Um, so I'm inherently just a very visual person, but it's kind of ironic because I was really inspired by this book and the, the theme that the visual is bias. And I really like that idea philosophically, but in reality, I love to doodle, like I love to proactively wander because I just like seeing everything. Um, so I think it's an interesting tension and one that really piques my interest and I'm able to explore that with my installation, The Light of Sound at Bell Labs. Hi, my name is Rodea Jigadeva and I've been the person who's been hiding behind this camera all this time and I've been documenting the progress of my fellow interns. <laughs> Oh, okay, what I actually want to say is Thanks most people think I have a really annoying voice, so that's ironic, because my project was all about, <laughs> like, what would you be if you were only your voice? Well, you answer. answered your own question. Annoying! <laughs> <laughs> when people come to see my project, what I want them to take away from this is starting to think about who do you become when only your voice exists and i'm actually going to directly pose this question and it does correlate with my quote that i'm going to be using this is something i thought of before reading the book and then while i read it it was truly emphasized and phrased in a way that i've never thought of before and i don't think this theme should just be stuck in between the pages of a book so ideally i'm trying to create an interactive experience to bring people and this idea and this book closer together. So basically I just need to do the last part, but everything's come together. I now think I might have something to show. to start testing to make sure that it doesn't break and that the audio streams still get to the right people. Yeah. Yeah. And then also dealing with smaller issues like being able to reconnect back into the stream to make the experience as seamless as possible. We locate people statically, which means that they enter their seat number and then they're directed to an audio stream and that's the stream that they have no matter where they move in the room. And eventually we want to make that dynamic so that if someone decides to, you know, get up and move where to another place in the audience, then the stream will change to reflect that. <laughs> 